Are you aware that part of the incentive to get OnlyFans models on podcasts like the Fresh and Fit podcast and the Whatever podcast is to market their OnlyFans to you guys? I actually learned, uh, and maybe you heard of, a couple of uh, weeks or maybe months ago, one particular adult entertainer, let's call her, adding an extra eighty to $90,000 to a monthly reoccurring revenue after she appeared on one of these podcasts. And part of the uh, draw for these models to go on these podcasts is essentially for Fresh and Fit to go, hey, if you come on our podcast, our audience will subscribe to your OnlyFans. So why am I sharing this with you? I'm sharing this with you because fundamentally, I want you to know that there are some creators out there who don't have your best interests at heart, who will hide under the guise of self-improvement and we're exposing female nature, when actuality they're exposing your nature. They're exposing your predisposition to want to procreate and they're monopolizing that and weaponizing it against you by getting these, for lack of a better word, harlots onto their podcasts and leveraging their OnlyFans subscription to get you to sink deeper and deeper into pornography addiction and uh, slavery. Now, I have a, a premise to this video that I believe once I kind of get my mind around could be a, a paradigm shifting one, meaning I don't like to say stay to the end of the video and watch all the video, but I'm going to say that today because I believe what I have to say is it has potential to change you, change the way you think, change the way you absorb information and fundamentally change your life, potentially, maybe for some of you, some of you willing to stay. Um, so I, I beg you be patient with me. I do have a post I want to share and, sh and their post is by uh, Magnoli. And I believe the post is true. I believe that everything that this individual is saying is the reason why you're suffering right now. So I'm going to go through this post and as usual, I'm going to add my color. Maybe the problem is with us men after all. I've noticed how when I'm doing retention, other women want to be feminine around me. They want to be kind, nice, and helpful. It goes beyond the attraction of simply looking good. Their attitude and how they correspond to interactions is different. They gain some sort of respect for you that sometimes makes even the most outgoing girls get shy around you. Some might call it being intimidated, especially if you are not too expansive, limit your speech and words, yet always polite and stay focused and don't be over eager. That will earn your respect up front. There's this girl in my gym who deals with plenty of men as her bro, laughs and talks loud and jokes around, but when she interacts with me, she's barely able to keep eye contact one-on-one, -on -one, just like typical shy girls. Today, she offered me a snack when I was about to leave she regressed to her feminine nature, but apparently only with me, a beginner, and not any of the other bulky men, which is interesting. Stuff like this makes you wonder. Maybe the problems with modern dating, feminism, etc., is that men stop being masculine. Maybe men lost self-control, lost purpose and direction, the ability to demand respect, set boundaries, to lead. They started acting like women, needy and weak getting drained by constant meaningless sexual activity and by women maybe sensing the weakness and naturally letting their rebellious impulse get the best of them. But that may be, but that might be only a reflection of the problems with men. Maybe deep down they want to feel safe and comforted in the company of a self-controlled man and they rarely find it, just like a child who grows out with any affection and attention from parents. This is a narrative maybe you haven't heard before, this idea of going back to traditional gender roles with a man being a leader, man being the provider, and a woman being the feminine, the nurturer. But what does that actually mean for us in terms of our responsibility? Well, it means that we have to have self-control. What does it actually mean to be a traditional man? It means we have to have complete and total self-preservation. It means we cannot be a slave to anything. If we cannot command ourselves, how can we command a woman? If we can't command ourselves, how can we lead a family? If we can't lead a family, how do we lead a community? How do we lead us into the future? This is the problem with most men. If you're watching this right now, you might have had, you might still be having troubles with pornography. You might be having troubles with smoking. 
maybe drinking, maybe weed. Now, I don't say this to condemn you, but I say this as a fact that you can't lead yourself. If it were the case that you could lead yourself, then this wouldn't be a problem in your life. And unfortunately, a lot of men are deluding themselves into thinking that they are to be able to gain a very attractive, feminine, submissive woman without being the equivalent as a man. If you're addicted to anything, you know that's inherently feminine. To be addicted is to be a slave to your limbic system, which is the emotional part of your brain, and not the logical part. The logical part is the masculine, the emotional part is the feminine. So if you're addicted to something, you're inherently ruled by your feminine nature. And again, this isn't my opinion. This is scientific facts I'm sharing with you now. Look, if you've never gotten to a period in your life when you've become very disciplined, very self-controlled, you've never been a slave to your impulses, you won't have any reference point for what I mean. The closest thing I can give you is to the feeling you had when you were a kid, when you had that sense of wonder that sense of optimism, that sense of ambition, that sense of joy you had in the world, and everything just felt like natural creative play to you. You know that part of you is still accessible to you, but the only reason that you can't access it is because it's behind the bars of your compulsion. You can be that wonderful child again, just running, playing, instigating fun, creating new things, being whimsical and playful. You can have your friends following you and the women chasing you, but it comes at a consequence of self-restraint. Now, why did I start this video talking about Fresh and Fit and the Whatever podcast? Is because many of you are worshiping false idols. I'm gonna talk about Andrew Tate here. And I know some of you won't enjoy me saying this because if you're a man and you're talking about self-improvement, unless you've been living under a rock, you will have heard of Andrew Tate. How did Andrew Tate get his wealth? He got his wealth by creating a cam girl business, which is essentially pornography, and uh, casinos, which is propagating gambling. This is who the typical man looks up to nowadays. If you were to pick a random man out of the street and say, who do you look up to? Or I did a Twitter poll the other day, who is the best role model for men today? And guess what most of them said? Most of, most of them said Andrew Tate. Now, no doubt Andrew Tate has said things that have made your life positive and you know, I'm not trying to disparage from that. I'm just trying to make you look at the reality of who this individual is and the reason that they are able to reach you. Same thing with the Whatever podcast, the same thing with Fresh and Fit. Every single one of them has made their voice heard by standing on your shoulders, by standing on the vulnerabilities of men, exploiting them in order to convey a new narrative under the guise of self-improvement, which might be might be valuable to you now. And if it is, you know, I'll say no more here. But if you're not getting the results that you want, let me just say that again. If right now your life isn't what you want it, meaning maybe you're still stuck at home. Maybe you can't get that girlfriend. Maybe you're depressed and anxious or stressed every single day. Maybe you need to change the way you approach things. Maybe watching too much of these particular sources isn't actually helping you. Maybe you might believe a lot of what they're saying, but in reality, your present circumstances haven't changed. Maybe the real answer is just in taking masculinity back. And by masculinity, I mean your self-restraint, your control. If you trust in anything, don't trust in me. Don't trust in... In, in, in Joseph or who I am. Trust in the sentiment of self-discipline, mental resilience, sexual self-control, and delaying immediate gratification. Trust in those things. Trust in forebrain activation, keeping your limbic system at bay. Trust in the masculine part of your mind. Trust in, trust in rational thought, rational thought, objective thought, logical thought. Don't trust in what makes you emotional. Don't trust in your desires, in your impulses, in what feels good in the moment. If there's anything I can convey to you at the end of this video is never trust any source that has at one point in time tried to monopolize your impulsivity, your reactivity, has tried to squeeze you, break you, make you a slave. You don't have your best interests at heart. Trust in you. I hope this changes the way you look at things and what you allow yourself to look at. These aren't theories. These are facts. Speak soon.